This is a very, very important video because this is spiritual, a spiritual practice and discipline that you can start right now, not later. And I recommend that you start this practice now, tonight, not later. If you're interested in being a psychic medium, if you want psychic development exercises, personal development exercises, if you want to be a better witch, whatever. Dream yogas and dream work and lucid dreaming and active dreaming, whatever it is you want to call it, the dream world is very, very important and you should be doing dream work. Let me shake this pen at you. <laughs> Dream work is a really fucking fast way for you to gauge where you're at spiritually, okay? The quality of your dreams is a good way to gauge where you're at on your spiritual path, in my opinion. Remember, all of this is just my opinion. We need to talk about the different layers of dreams or the different states or modes of consciousness and what these things mean. I know everybody's seen, or hopefully you've seen, Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness, where the very opening scene, Doctor Strange battles this kind of like demon, monster, and in his dream, things go foul and he dies or whatever. But he wakes up uh, from his dream. What he finds out later on in the movie is that dream was actually him having a a vision into his multiversal self or another version of himself in another universe in one of the multiverses. A very fascinating concept, but actually that concept is really, really, really old. It's a really old concept. It's not a new concept. That when we dream, we go to another place. We go to another world, or at least we see or have vision psychically into another world or wherever it is that we go. So let's break down consciousness. <clears throat> so we have our conscious waking reality, okay? Reality is a tricky word because just because you're dreaming doesn't mean that's any less of a reality than this reality, okay? When you're awake, you're experiencing time, the progression of time, you know, you are interacting with matter, people, you have a stream of consciousness that's, you know, pretty uh, continuous, you're awake. Well, that would be waking consciousness, okay? And what you come into contact with in your waking consciousness is going to affect your dreams, okay? One is going to affect the other. You could have a really, really horrible nightmare, a terrible traumatizing nightmare and wake up with anxiety and walk around all day completely anxious and disturbed by the dream you had. So obviously your dreams also affect your waking life. So you have waking consciousness and then when you go to sleep, you have consciousness that happens in dreams at varying degrees, which we're gonna get into, but you're still conscious because you're there, you're present for it, okay? You're aware, even if it's when your body is in shutdown mode. Your consciousness is still active, you're still, your mind is still active, okay? And then you have unconsciousness, which is when the mind is just not there. <laughs> unconsciousness means that you're not awake, you're not dreaming, you're either in a very, very deep sleep or you've been hit in the head or fallen unconscious or in a coma in some kind of way. But what you have to realize, realize about who you are or who you really are, at least according to yoga and Buddhism and things like that, um, specifically Vedanta, uh, uh, Advaita Vedanta, which is non-dualistic Vedanta, um, the wisdom of the Vedas, is that who you are is pure consciousness. What I am is pure consciousness. That pure consciousness has all kinds of layers on top of it, layers and layers and layers and layers on top of it that make me who I am, that make me look like Brujo Ryan or Philip Ryan Deal. 
But who I really am is pure consciousness. And that pure consciousness is not affected by my body. It's not affected by my random emotions. And it's not affected by the random thoughts that go through my mind. That pure consciousness is the consciousness that is going to reincarnate from lifetime to lifetime to lifetime, from one body to another body, through one dimension to another dimension, through higher worlds, lower worlds, and even uh, multiversal worlds. So that consciousness, that pure consciousness is always there. Even when we're seemingly unconscious, we're still embodied, okay? It's the consciousness is around the body. So we need to break down different levels of dreaming, okay? Our goal is to become lucid dreamers or lucid dreamer plus, and I'll explain. Some people, when they go to sleep at night, they close their eyes and they see nothing. They hear nothing. It's just nothingness. And when they wake up the next morning, they feel refreshed and they don't remember anything about their dreams. They, they, don't, they say, well, I don't remember my dreams. I don't believe I dream. So they, they experience an unconscious state. They don't re, they, they're not conscious during the sleep state. Which is great, which is fine, actually. That's just fine. You know, uh, you want to get to a place where if, when you lay your head down on your pillow, you want to be able to say, tonight I want to go to sleep and I want to have a deep sleep and I want to have a, I don't want to remember anything when I go to sleep tonight. I just want to be out, you know, and I want to rest. You know, I want to be unconscious. And then some nights you want to lay down and put your head on the pillow and be like, okay, tonight is an adventurous night. I think I want to dream. I think I want to travel in my dreams and be able to do that. So being able to control your dream state is very, very important in yoga, in Tibetan dream yogas, and also in shamanism, and in psychic abilities and psychic development. Then there are people who go to sleep at night, and they dream, and they wake up, and they know that they dreamed, but they don't remember what they dreamed. They're like, yeah, I know I dream, but I just can never remember them. Then there are people who go to sleep and dream, and remember their dreams and might even have vivid dreams, but they have no control over their dreams. That means they are witnessing themselves experiencing things in dreams or they're seeing things happen in the first person, but their dreams are out of control. They don't have the ability to manipulate the dream. They don't have the ability to make, to, to change the fabric of the dream or the construct of the dream. And then there are people that are lucid dreamers. They go to sleep at night, they start dreaming they realize that they're in the dream state, that they are asleep, and they have the ability to change the dream, change the characters that they're interacting with in the dream. Maybe they decide they want to go to the Great Wall of China, or they want to go underwater and be a mermaid, or maybe they decide that they want to fly. There's a lot of people that like to fly in their dreams because they know that they're spirit, their soul, their mind, whatever you want to call it, <laughs> that part that's a conscious while the body's asleep, doesn't have any confines on it to be able to achieve things that you can't do in the material realm, okay? Those people, I love them and I admire them. Whew. There's a man named Robert Wagoner, and I'm going to put a link to YouTube videos down below underneath this particular video, or maybe even put one of his interviews uh, after this video and this video series, but he talks about lucid dreaming and he has written multiple books on lucid dreaming and you need to get those books. I think one of the books is called Lucid Dreaming Gateway to the Inner Self and which we'll talk about helping you to achieve lucid dreaming. We're going to get more into that in a minute, but uh, there's a great movie and it's called Inception and it's like my favorite movie and it's got Leonardo DiCaprio in it and uh, I'm not a huge fan of Leonardo DiCaprio but this was a really really good movie and it's about dreams and it's about dreaming within dreams and I recommend that you 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 watch the movie Inception uh, which is a movie about dreams and dream espionage it's really really cool that will give you a little bit more of an understanding about layers of dreams and uh, layers of consciousness within dreams. But the point is, is that we need to understand how to start becoming more lucidly aware when we're in our dreams, or at least be able to remember our dreams. So that's the very simple goal. 
Very simple goal here is to be able to remember your dreams, not interpret your dreams, okay? This is not about dream interpretation. This is not about, okay, I'm gonna go to sleep tonight and I, I went to sleep last night and I dreamed about a butterfly. What did that butterfly mean? What was a butterfly trying to tell me? You know, it's, it's not about that. It's about being active in your dreams and being able to change what's going on in your dreams and actively participate in your dreams, okay? Dream interpretation is another occult science. It's a completely separate category than actual lucid dreaming. Lucid dreaming is the ability to be able to dream psychically. Now I wanna talk about psychic gifts for a second because I group psychic abilities into three different categories. The first category is lucid dreamers and everybody that has psychic dreaming. That's a very specific gift. It's very special. It's separate from let's say clairvoyance, being able to see things that are not there, hear things that are not there. Um, feel things that are not there, smell things that are not there, or communicate with non-physical entities, which is also different from being an empath or someone who has uh, psychic empathy or psychic emotions or the ability to pick up on things psychically, um, emotionally. Just because you're an empath doesn't mean that you have clairvoyance, and just because you have clairvoyance doesn't mean you're an empath, although most psychics have a little bit of both. And just because you're an empath and a psychic medium that has clairvoyance doesn't necessarily mean you can dream. So we all have different gifts that we need to focus on and we, we work with our strengths and we try to develop our weaknesses, okay? So the way to really, and I'm gonna talk, I'm gonna make a whole video about empaths. I'm gonna make a video about um, being an empath next after this. But the way that you're going to start getting on board with dreaming is you're going to keep a dream journal. You're going to put a pad of paper beside your bed or if you need to like take a voice memo on your phone or whatever. If you wake up in the middle of the night from any dream, you need to write it down or talk it into your phone and record it. When you wake up first thing in the morning, before you piss, before you get out of bed, roll over, grab your journal and write down what you can remember because it's by journaling and remembering our dreams that is almost like a psychological trigger to be more aware and conscious in our dreams. There's another dream technique where we remind ourselves during the day that even though we're awake, this is all still a dream. So you kind of like fuck with your mind a little bit by being like, yeah, I'm awake, but I'm still dreaming. I'm awake, but dreaming. And you start tricking your mind into questioning what is real and what is not real. Um, like paying attention to how heavy your cup is when you pick it up. You know, in a dream, you might go to pick up something and it, there's no weight to it. That might trigger your ability to realize that you're not, you're not awake, but you're somewhere else or you're in your dream space. Um, there's a great exercise I tell people to do to start uh, generating the kind of vision that you need in order to uh, do work in your dreams. So... I like to pretend that I'm in a movie theater and there's two, there's two parts to this particular exercise, okay? And the first part is I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna see a big giant movie screen in my mind's eye, create a visualization. Your imagination is the portal, it's the key that opens up all psychic abilities, okay? So I'm gonna imagine that I have this huge movie theater in front of me, okay? And I'm going to think about my favorite movie I'm not gonna think about anything as part of my life. I'm not gonna think about my childhood. Oh no, absolutely not. I'm not gonna think about relationships. I'm not gonna think about myself. This is not about me. This is a creative visualization about something else, okay? Like I love Star Wars and Marvel movies. So I'm gonna sit here and pretend I'm watching Doctor Strange. And I'm gonna try to remember in my mind, you know, a scene from a movie and, and watch that scene being played out in my mind on that movie screen, okay? So I'm watching it. Then I'm gonna take a break, I'm gonna go have some coffee, relax, come back five minutes later, and I'm gonna sit down and I'm gonna imagine that whole scene again, but now I'm gonna put myself in it and in an augmented kind of reality, I wanna see Doctor Strange moving around my room and I wanna feel like uh, the, these things are going on around me as if I'm in the first person now, you know, seeing these things within the space. Because when you're dreaming, sometimes you're looking at yourself and seeing something happen to you in a dream, and sometimes you're looking at it from the first person. 
So this toggling back and forth between picturing something happen and imagining something happen and picturing something happen, picturing something's happening <laughs> and things happening around you in your imagination is a great way to start unlocking those, 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 those little doors that will allow you to be more aware and participate more in your dreams. You can also do an exercise where you put your hands in front of your face before you go to sleep at night for a couple of minutes and you meditate and you say, tonight when I dream, I'm going to see my hands in my dream. Tonight when I dream, I'm going to see my hands in my dream. I have to remember to see my hands when I dream. And when you're dreaming, you might remember that you're supposed to look at your hands. And when you look at your hands, you realize that, oh, wow, yeah, I'm dreaming right now. Look at your nails, you know, say, I have blue nails right now. If I dream tonight and I don't have blue nails, I'm going to know that I'm dreaming. You can also look down at your feet. Look at your feet and look down. Be like, okay, I'm looking at my feet. I can see my feet. Tonight when I'm dreaming, I want to look down and see my feet. Because how many times have you ever looked down and seen the rest of your torso or your body or your feet in your dreams? If you're in it. Like, where is the body that you feel embodied in when you're in dreams? Do you see your arms? Do you see your feet? Do you see body parts? Your body parts when you're dreaming? These are all questions and meditations that you should do. Um, because the whole purpose of this is to be able to liberate your consciousness so that you do not feel that your only reality or your only experience as a being is confined to the waking state, because it's not. And... Being highly imaginative, and there's a very fine line between fantasizing and fantasy. A fantasy or something that you're fantasizing about is like a constructed kind of creative visualization where like, okay, I'm going to sit here and I'm going to meditate and I'm going to pretend that I'm at the beach. Or I'm going to pretend that I'm walking to the lake. Or I'm going to pretend that I'm, uh, you know, dancing somewhere um, in a theater. You know, those are kinds of constructed creative visualizations that are exercises because those exercises of creating a visualization or following a guided meditation that takes you on a journey helps to stimulate the parts of your brain. They're going to be more imaginative, more creative, more active, and the ability to uh, participate in dreams. And that's really what psychic abilities are. In order to, to be a good psychic medium, um, you have to be able to sustain, suspend disbelief. There's a temporary suspending of disbelief that has to happen in order for you to be actively engaged in any kind of creative visualization. Like another great exercise. I love Star Wars. I could jump up right now and I could grab a hold of my imaginary lightsaber and I could run into the other room and I could look around and in my mind's eye, I could pretend that I see, you know, um, uh, uh, foot soldiers coming at me and I can start fighting them with my imaginary sword, and uh, I could even fight Darth Vader if I wanted to, or pretend I was fighting Darth Vader. <laughs> and that would be a very creative, exciting, and I guess what, I have done that. That would be a very exciting and creative way to actively get your imagination going while also physically being um, um, engaged. Because um, your brain doesn't know the difference between what is real and imagined. They did this. this was, there was a scientific experiment that was done, and the scientific experiment that was done uh, specifically had to do with how the brain functions when it's taking in sensory data. And so what the scientists did was they put the plugs on the person's head, and they sat them down, and they handed them an apple, or they showed them a picture, or some other kind of physical object, and they said, well, we want you to study this object. We want you to really think about it, you know, feel it all, you know, uh, uh, get the experience of it. And when this person was holding the item or looking at the item, different parts of the brain lit up, the, kind of the parts of the brain that had to do with stimulation and being stimulated and interacting with an object. Then they took the picture away or they took the apple away or whatever. And they said, we want you to think about that, that image again, or we want to think about what you just did or holding the apple. Guess what they found out? What they found out was the brain, the same parts of the brain lit up whether or not the object was present or not, which told them that your brain and your body doesn't know the difference between what is real and what is Im imagined. What does that tell you? That tells you that you can go to sleep at night 
And while you're dreaming, if you have a dream that's not necessarily good or you're running or you're exercising or you're being chased, that you can wake up sweating. You can wake up with your heart beating. You can wake up feeling anxiety. And even though that experience was something dreamed, it wasn't real, your body doesn't realize that it's not real and your body will still react. And I guarantee you, if I started pretending that I was doing some kind of lightsaber um, uh, battle with uh, Darth Vader, there's a part of me that would start generating anxiety. It would get hot. It would it would start to rev up the nervous system. It would it would it would start releasing hormones, a fight or flight mechanism in my body, and I would start experiencing physically on a physiological level what it would actually like to be in a fight. Okay, these are things that you have to think about. These are things that you have to remember, and those are some. Very exciting ways to start testing yourself into working towards doing lucid dreaming. Last thing I'm gonna recommend is that um, if I drink orange juice or a glass of orange juice before I go to sleep at night, it actually stimulates my brain to dream more. So I don't know if that's something that can help you or maybe some people uh, recommend like mugwort tea and other things like that to stimulate dreaming, but that is definitely something that you want to think about. Because paying attention to your dreams is a great way to gauge your spiritual progress when it comes to your consciousness. Here's the last thing I forgot to say about dreams. And this video is too long, but I'm going to go ahead and say it now. There's something called the astral temple. And the astral temple, this is, this is what I would consider to be advanced dream work. The astral temple is actually a place that you sit and you construct in your mind through creative visualization. You construct an astral temple. It can be a church, a cathedral, it can be a castle, it can be a tree, it can be um, a hole in the ground that you climb through to go to a very special place. But the astral temple is a safe space that you create in your mind in order to do creative visualization and meditate and do spiritual work when you're doing spiritual things that require that don't require physical stuff like witchcraft we're talking about mentalism and shamanism and things like that but the goal is eventually to be able to astrally project your consciousness into your astral temple while you are sleeping so what you construct through creative visualization during the day when you go to sleep at night to be able to send yourself to that same place when you're dreaming and when you are able to astrally project yourself into that place that you've constructed, that astral temple, while you're dreaming, you have the ability to do spiritual work in that temple, casting spells, performing magic, even sitting in meditation, you know, even accessing uh, communication between ancestors, spirits, deities, and learning things that you might not learn in the waking state. All right, so take all of this stuff, think about it, and we will talk about what it's like to be an empath next.